True. Cool. All right. Well, thank you everybody for joining. It's always nice to have some live people in the in the seminars. I know we record them for you so you can watch them at a later date, but it's nice to do some interacting. Um, so this is the second seminar in the Healthy Heart Ambassador Blood Pressure Self-Monitoring Program. Um, last week, we talked about the DASH diet. This week, we're going to be talking about reducing sodium intake in your diet. And for anyone who wasn't here last week, again, my name is Francesca. Um, I'm a registered dietitian and I'm actually working with TAT Health Solutions for our past couple months now, I'm finishing up my master's degree. So I was lucky enough to get to work with them as an intern. If you guys have questions, you can put it in the chat or just shout them out, stop me at any point, or I could save them for the end. Okay. All right, so the plan for this afternoon. I have to do a pause. I'm not dressed. Uh, the agenda for this afternoon, we're going to be talking about the nutrition and blood pressure facts, what exactly is sodium, how to reduce our sodium intake, um, so we'll give you some low sodium meal options, and how to choose healthier options, and why this low sodium lifestyle, we'll call it, actually really works. Hi, Princess. I want to just a couple of housekeeping rules, guys. Make sure you're on mute. And if you want to say anything, just raise your hand. I'm going to be looking in the chat. You can put it in the chat or raise your hand for a reaction. Or you, if you want to talk, you can. Just let us know. Raise your hand and say you have something to say. So I just I want to let that put that out there. Thanks, guys. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay, so I'm sure some of you already know that nutrition choices obviously have a direct impact on our blood pressure. So these nutrition seminars address different ways of eating that we should be mindful of to stay healthy and effectively manage our blood pressure. Okay, so as far as nutrition and blood pressure, the recommended intakes, you might already know this or this might sound completely foreign to you, um, for the general population, the general um, recommended sodium intake is less than 2,300 milligrams per day. And for special populations, it's actually even lower, and it's less than 1,500 milligrams per day. So anyone who's considered a special population is someone who's at a higher risk. So those are individuals who are over 51 uh, African American, have high blood pressure, have diabetes, a kidney impairment, or kid chronic kidney disease. So that's why the, the recommendations for special populations are even lower than the general population. So reducing sodium intake can have, of course, a direct impact on our blood pressure, but it really can help with blood pressure management. And this always fascinates me. Nine out of 10 Americans consume more than the recommended amount of sodium. So pretty much everyone, pretty much everyone is consuming more than the recommended amount of sodium. That's, that's crazy if we really think about that. Um, the average American is actually consuming about 3,400 milligrams of sodium per day. So that's well over the recommended uh, daily intake. So just try to look at those numbers because that, that is crazy. The average American is consuming about 3,400 milligrams of sodium per day. So what, what do you guys think of that? Do you, does that sound like, does it sound about right? Did you kind of figure we were consuming too much sodium or are you completely shocked? What do you guys think? I'm, I'm still shocked. Even after reading these presentations and doing all this research, I'm still shocked. So excess sodium intake, of course, it causes our body to retain fluid. That's why we might experience swelling, it can be hard on strain our heart, and it makes managing our blood pressure really, really challenging. Okay, so we talk about the specific uh, special populations for those who need a, a lower uh, sodium daily intake. Um, those are, like we said, anyone who's over the age of 51, you are automatically at a higher risk for developing heart disease. Anyone uh, African-American, hypertension, if you have diabetes or chronic kidney impairment. And 
this is about half of the US population. So that's a lot of people who are at risk for developing heart disease. And that's a lot of people who have a lot lower sodium requirement. So if we think about nine out of 10 Americans are well consuming well over the, am the amount that they need, only half of the pop, about half of the population doesn't even need that much. So it's really, it's really interesting when you think about it. It's also important, of course, to establish health nutrition and lifestyle habits, regardless of your health status. If you're not in this special category, um, it, it's, it still should be of great concern and something that you're paying attention to. All right, so now we're gonna take a look at what sodium is and how we can reduce it in our diet. So we'll talk a little bit about sodium versus salt, because a lot of times both of those words are thrown around like they're interchangeable and you know most people think they mean the same exact thing, but there is a little bit of a caveat. So it is a common misconception and that's why I just wanna provide you guys some extra information so you can share your knowledge with your friends and your family. So um, sodium, is actually technically Na, that's the element. It's a mineral that the human body needs for fluid maintenance and sodium bonds to water. So it actually pulls it into our bloodstream. It's also critical for nerve impulses and muscle function. So the body only needs about 500 milligrams of sodium to actually function properly. So then where is all the other sodium or salt in our diet coming from? It's coming from table salt which is actually called sodium chloride. And about 40% of the weight of sodium chloride is actually sodium. So most of our American diets, they're coming, it, the salt that's in our diets is coming from sodium chloride. So just a little caveat, if anyone would ever tell you that it means the same exact thing, you can wow them with your, um, with your knowledge on it. Okay, so consuming too much sodium, of course, is going to lead to excess sodium in our bloodstream, which is then going to lead to excess fluid that's pulled into our bloodstream. So our total blood volume is going to eat, increase. So the, when you have more blood flowing through your body, your blood pressure is going to increase. And this is the best example I can give you guys. I don't know if you've ever, you've ever had a really salty meal that you know, you got takeout or you went to one of your favorite restaurants, but they load the dishes up with salt. You kind of feel like your fingers or your and your hands, they feel like they're a little tight or they're a little bit swollen. You might even experience it in your in your feet or your toes. Um, but I, I notice that if I have a ring on, I can't barely get it off at any time that I have. I know I had too much sodium. So next time, just pay attention to that. You'll be you'll be um, surprised. So it's because, now you'll know why that's happening. It's because your kidneys want to maintain a specific sodium to water ratio inside your body. So they're actually holding on to that extra water to compensate for all that sodium that you just had in your meal. That's why you experience swelling. Okay. So this is this is a great uh, helpful tip just to visualize what we're talking about because we keep saying milligrams and I, I don't know what milligrams look like. Most of us don't know what milligrams look like. So this is a good tool. Just you know you can you can jot this down or refer back to this when the next time you're you're trying to imagine how much sodium you're really getting. So we said that the general recommendation was for about twenty three hundred milligrams of sodium for the general population. That's about a tablespoon, uh, uh, I'm sorry, that's about a teaspoon of salt. So you think about a little teaspoon, fill it up, level it. That's about 2,300 milligrams or what the general guidelines say we should be having in a day. But if you're, if you're part of that special population who's a little bit more at risk, which we talked about earlier, then you need even less than that, that teaspoon. So if we find it here, it's going to be somewhere, let's see, 1,500, a little bit a little bit more than half that teaspoon. That's where you, you would fall in, significantly less. So you think about it, it's a little bit less than three, three quarters of a teaspoon per day. So hopefully that helps when you're reading the nutrition labels like we talked about last week, or you're trying to think in terms of milligrams, you actually have some sort of visual now. So you can bet a little better understand it. That always helps me.
Okay. So as far as reducing sodium intake, where is the salt in our diet really, really coming from? I mean, more than 75% of the sodium that we eat comes from processed foods, which you probably could guess. But are there any foods on this list that you guys feel like, ooh, I, I eat this a lot. Maybe that's where a lot of my sodium is, my salt is uh, coming from in my diet. I don't know if you have, if you're big on cheese, maybe try to have cheese with all your meals, just reducing the amount of cheese or uh, cutting it out at certain meals can greatly reduce the amount of sodium in your diet. Cheese is loaded with sodium, especially um, if you have, if your typical lunch is like a, a cold cut sandwich with a piece of cheese and then you have your, your deli meats loaded with sodium. So this just gives you a list of some some common foods that a lot of us consume on a pretty frequent basis. Um, hopefully not after you guys attend these seminars, you'll be uh, encouraged to try and limit these a little bit more. Um, but this is this is primarily what a lot of Americans, we, we go for convenience, things that are processed, things that are packaged already. Um, and unfortunately they have a lot of sodium in them. The other thing I did wanna to mention to you guys, um, because this is important to note, when you're reading the food labels, a lot of them, um, you know, it'll, it'll say 300 milligrams of sodium on the nutrition facts label. Um, but then, you know, we're talking about, well, I'm supposed to follow like a 1.5 gram sodium diet. So how does that correlate to milligrams, all these numbers and all these, it can get a little confusing. So if if you're looking at um, your whole diet, generally we speak in grams. So if you're following a two gram sodium diet, that just means that it's 2000 milligrams. So that's why when you're looking at your nutrition facts labels, if it's in milligrams, that's why. So not to get confused, we're not talking about two different things. It's the same thing. It's just said differently. That's all. Okay. This part I want you guys to think a little bit. Um, you can put some answers in the chat if you'd like. Um, but think about what, what you can do. You know, some of these things listed on here, like eat more fruits and vegetables, of course. I mean, we've we've pretty much heard that our whole life. Um, we, we know we need to eat more fruits and vegetables, but think about things that you have in your diet pretty regularly. What can you do after we've been talking about this to, to lower the sodium content in, in some of the meals that you prepare or the foods that you get in the store? Just try to get creative. So, you know, buying fresh, frozen, no salt added canned vegetables of course that's always the goal you know trying to choose fresh poultry lean cuts of meat and fish uh, with healthy fats instead of red or processed meat like sausages turkey uh, excuse me bacon um, a lot of the dried meats deli meats things like that you can also use a lot of spices to, to flavor your food it doesn't have to be just the salt shaker I'm going to show you a video in a couple of minutes on a a, a quick way that I made a, a, a low sodium taco mix. Um, so I'll share that with you in a couple of minutes. Of course, this is really difficult, but if you can, when you're dining out, you can try and ask, can you prepare my, my vegetables or my chicken without any salt, if possible? Sometimes they're made in, in big batches, so it might be a little bit more difficult for certain restaurants, but it does not hurt to ask. Um, especially when you're going out, because that's where a lot of the sodium is. And of course, taking the salt shaker off of the table is ideal, right? If you're putting a little bit in your food while you're cooking, um, but you're using primarily um, herbs and, and spices to season your food, then you definitely don't need the salt shaker in addition on the table. Okay, so this is what I was talking about. Some ideas for some salt-free seasonings. So you can read through these. Um, I had just created a short video on uh, the third one, the taco chili blend. 
that's what I feel like I gravitate towards the most. Um, I use this to season a lot of dish, different dishes, whether it is tacos or chili, um, but other things like stuffed peppers or um, just just if, if I'm making a, a wrap or a burrito, um, this blend seems to be really helpful for me. And it's a heck of a lot better than a lot of the prepackaged uh, taco chili blends that you'll find like the McCormick or um, the Ortega, those brands, they're loaded with sodium. And even when you get, it, it's of course always better to get the low sodium if it's marked, you know, reduced sodium, uh, but they're still loaded with sodium. So I encourage you give one of these blends a try. Um, you can jot down the ingredients or come back to and ref, you know, refer, refer to this video at a later date, but definitely give give them a try. I'm going to pull up the video now for you guys. The current dietary guidelines for Americans recommends that adults should limit their sodium intake to no more than 2,300 milligrams per day. One way you can reduce your sodium intake is to eat more home-prepared foods where you have control over sodium. In this video demonstration, you can see the preparation of a taco chili spice blend made without salt. It includes chili powder, ground cumin, onion powder, dried oregano, garlic powder, ground red pepper, and cinnamon. What you may not know is there is a big difference between herbs and spices. Herbs are derived from leafy parts of the plant and have more mild, fresh flavors. Spices are derived from other plant parts like the seed or roots. Spices have a stronger, more intense flavor. Spices are also recognized for their antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, and antimicrobial properties. Some replacements for salt when seasoning chicken are basil, cloves, cranberries, ginger, mushrooms, oregano, paprika. Some replacements for salt when seasoning beef include bay leaf, caraway, curry, dill weed, dry mustard, grape jelly, green pepper, even mushroom. And some replacements for salt when seasoning fish include curry, dill, green pepper, salt-free lemon pepper, tomato, and turmeric. The overall health benefits of herbs and spices include improved metabolic control, less reliance on sugar and salt, improved weight management, and improved overall health. Don't be afraid to experiment with different herbs and spices when flavoring your food. All right, guys. So, like I said, I just use I just took the recipe straight from here. This is a salt free seasoning taco chili blend. So, if you feel inspired, I encourage you to give it a try. All right. So as far as canned goods, um, we talked a little bit now about how to flavor our foods, you know, and when when we're trying to reduce our sodium intake. But if you go to the grocery store and you can't find fresh vegetables, or they're not on sale and they're way too expensive, and then you can't find them in the frozen option, and you your last resort, you go to the canned canned goods uh, aisle and you're looking for some canned vegetables. The key is if you can find them with the label of reduced sodium or low sodium, that's the best bet. But that's still not good enough. You still really need to be rinsing them out in the colander like you see in the photo here, whether it's your beans or your uh, canned corn, if any sort of uh, chickpeas, anything that comes in a can, any sort of vegetable or bean, it needs to be uh, rinsed thoroughly with water before you add it into your meals, if your goal is to reduce sodium. Because there's a lot of salt and other additives that are being added when they're being put through the canning process. So although it's it's wonderful and it's the first step is to buy a reduced sodium, you know, can with the reduced sodium label on it, the second step to make it even better is to rinse them thoroughly. So food labels have a lot of claims on them related to the sodium content. Um, and if it does have a claim on it, it means that it is regulated. So when you're reading the label, it's of course very important to look at the serving size, see how many there are in the package. 
um, because a lot of them will have even two or even four servings in, in one package. So each claim has a quantitative meaning behind it. So we'll we'll look at that. Um, th this picture is just a, a typical mixed vegetable blend that you'd find in the frozen food aisle. Um, and this one is just the frozen vegetables. So there's no garlic butter, there's no cheese sauce, none of that, you don't need any of that because that's where they're adding a lot of the extra sodium and extra fat. You just, you don't need it. You're, if you're going for mixed vegetables, it should just have mixed vegetables, no salt. Okay, so if you see these this verbiage on, on a lot of the packages in the grocery store, you, you really should know what it means. So if something's claiming that it's sodium free, that means there's less than five milligrams of sodium per serving in that item. And it contains no sodium chloride, which is the table salt that we were talking about in the beginning of the lecture. So if it's sodium free, it has less than five milligrams of sodium. Doesn't mean it has zero. So just want to point that out. It's sodium, it says sodium free, but that just means it has less than five milligrams. Doesn't mean it has zero. If it says that it's very low sodium, that means that it has less than 35 milligrams of sodium per serving. So it's, still very, it's, very, it's a very low sodium item for sure. If something's labeled just low sodium, that means that it has less than 140 milligrams per serving. So you see, as we're getting further and further down the list, the amount of sodium is kind of going up, up, up. If it just says that it's reduced or less sodium than the original package, like a lot of the uh, the taco and herb, um, the taco and spices, the, a lot of the prepackaged, um, they'll say that. A lot of the canned goods will say just reduced or less. Um, a lot of soy sauce, teriyaki, a lot of the marinades will say that it's reduced sodium. So when you see that, just remember that it means that at least it's at least 25% or less sodium than the usual level of sodium in the product. So if it's claiming that it's reduced, it's reduced by about 25%. And then light, you know, in terms of, of sodium, of course, if you're talking about fat or calories, light really means it contains at least 50% reduced sodium per serving. So these terms are really important, especially if you're the one who does the grocery shopping in your household. It's really important that you understand what they mean. Otherwise, you're just looking at the, the labels and, and not really understanding what the difference between very low sodium or reduced sodium actually means. But now you have at least a, a general idea. All right. These are some sample meals um, that we put up here, just giving you ideas of how you could reduce some your sodium intake throughout your day. So for breakfast, you can have a whole wheat piece of toast with some peanut butter, banana, blueberries, and a cup of milk. Seems like a pretty low sodium breakfast. For lunch, maybe have a quinoa salad with some black beans that are rinsed, low sodium black beans that were rinsed at home with some scallion, uh, scallions, corn, red pepper, some fresh mango and avocado for some healthy fats and a cup of milk. And then for dinner, maybe a piece of grilled chicken, seasoned with a lot of herbs and spices, not so much salt, with some brown rice on the side, some steamed broccoli, and a cup of milk. So just some, just some quick, easy uh, sample meals to get you, you guys thinking a little bit. All right, so this one I want you guys to either put some answers in the chat or say them aloud. So we're gonna choose. Some of them are a little bit tricky. Which, which of the two choices for each meal do you think has the least amount of sodium in it? So we'll start with breakfast. So breakfast sandwich with one egg, a slice of cheddar cheese, turkey bacon on a whole wheat English muffin with a cup of water on the side, or yogurt with some oats, blueberries, sliced banana, and a cup of water. Which one is lower in sodium? You guys put it in the chat, any guesses? B. 
the yogurt? That's correct. Nice job. The yogurt is the lower one in sodium. And do you have any idea uh, maybe how we could make the the first option a little bit more uh, DASH diet friendly, a little bit lower in sodium? How could we change that first one? Any ideas? Use egg whites. Yep. That's one option. Absolutely. Uh, just using some egg whites. What about the cheese? Uh, low sodium or low, low fat cheese. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, so those are some good suggestions for how we can make that first breakfast option a little bit better. Um, you could also do some whole wheat toast with some no salt added peanut butter, maybe an apple on the side, get some fresh fruits going on in that breakfast meal because I don't really see any. But excellent. Good job. All right, let's try lunch. So the two options we have are a Greek salad with spinach, tomatoes, cucumbers, low-fat feta cheese, kalamata olives, pepperoncinis, and Greek dressing with a cup of water, or a whole wheat wrap with tomatoes, spinach, black beans, avocado, olive oil, and balsamic vinegar. Which one is lower in sodium here? Could be a little tricky, but let's see what you guys learned so far. I think it's going to be number two is going to be lower. Yep, that's exactly right. Absolutely. So what do you think we could do to the first option then to make that one a little bit lower in sodium? Any ideas? Because they're both not they're both not terrible, right? Option one has low fat fat of cheese. So they already are, we're already thinking cheese could be high in sodium, getting a low fat or a, a lower fat option. That could be helpful. But what about the Kalamata olives, the peppers? Those could get a maybe, little high in sodium. Maybe you could just use some grilled peppers, you know, mm -hmm. or something that doesn't have all that sodium in it. Yep. You could, you know, maybe use a smaller amount of the olives, just get rid of the pepperoncinis. Um, or you could ask for the dressing on the side because I don't, you know, Greek dressing that could be made a couple of different ways could depend on the restaurant you're getting it from if you're making it. So if you ask for the dressing on the side, that goes as a rule of thumb for, for anywhere you're ordering a salad out, ask for it on the side so you can control how much you're pouring on. Okay, let's do dinner. One more. So we have option one, a grilled chicken with brown rice, steamed broccoli, cup of milk, pretty basic meal, or a turkey burger with lettuce, tomato, onion, ketchup, mustard, Swiss cheese on a whole wheat bun with some baked sweet potato wedges and a cup of water. Which one is lower in sodium? Grilled chicken. Yeah, that one was a little bit easier. Yeah, the grilled chicken with some plain brown rice and steamed broccoli is definitely going to be lower in sodium. But what can we do to the turkey burger to make it a little uh, dash more dash diet friendly? Any ideas? Eliminate the ketchup and the mustard. Absolutely. Yep. Or choose lower sodium condiments. You can you know see if you find low low sodium ketchup or low sodium mustard. But yeah, absolutely. Or you could just omit them completely. What about the the cheese, the Swiss cheese? Maybe low salt. Mm -hmm. Yep. Choose a lower salt, a uh, lower sodium option of the Swiss cheese, and then the sweet potato fries. They probably have some salt on them, um. So you can maybe swap that with a side of steamed broccoli or a fresh vegetable instead. But there's plenty of different ways you can work around work around it and make your meal a little bit lower in sodium. So excellent. Good job, guys. Okay. Well, we'll talk a little bit about why reducing sodium in our diet actually works and how does it affect our blood pressure. So of course, establishing healthy nutrition and lifestyle habits um, to promote overall health, prevent chronic disease such as hypertension, diabetes, chronic kidney disease, Reducing sodium in our diet also helps with reducing fluid retention, which in turn is going to help with weight management, blood pressure management, 
And of course, you're, you're going to feel better. Ultimately, that's that's the goal. It's, you know, yes, you want to see the numbers on your blood pressure cuff go, go down, uh, but it's really about how you feel. And you're going to feel a, a heck of a lot better. So you're going to get rid of that maybe bloating or any sort of swelling and weight gain that you're experiencing after eating high sodium meals that are resulting in fluid retention. So it'll also be easier to, of course, manage your blood pressure. All right, we'll do a little bit more talking and then I'll let you guys ask some questions. So brainstorm a little bit um, and please share if, if you feel if you feel like it, um, think about some things that you had for maybe breakfast or lunch today. What have you eaten already today? And what kind of foods were maybe high in sodium? Or what kind of foods you want to share with us that you know were lower in sodium and you were you were conscious of how much sodium you were taking in? Anyone want to share? Maybe for breakfast you had... Yeah. For dinner, I had a, a veggie burger. Okay. A sweet potato, some green beans. Ooh, okay. Did you put anything on the sweet potato? No. No, okay. And this, the green beans, they were just steamed? Steamed with some olive oil and spices. Excellent. Wonderful. Okay. Um, anyone else want to share? Maybe some snack items? Any low sodium snack items that you guys are experimenting with or um, things that you know you really shouldn't be having that maybe you indulged? It's just good. To, it's good to get to get you thinking about this. I even do it as, as myself and this is what I do for work. I mean, I'm always, you're, we always really should be thinking about, is this a healthy choice? And, and it's not, it doesn't have to be just because you want to lose weight or just because you want to lower your blood pressure. Of course, those are incredible um, motivators and things that, that are going to be outcomes of it. But even beyond that, you know, you really need to be thinking of these things when you're making choices about the food you're putting into your body on an everyday, every meal uh, level. I mean, it, it is that important. And then, of course, think about how you feel after you ate out or you had takeout or you had a really salty bag of chips or um, a high sodium meal and you, you that you didn't cook, but, you know, someone else prepared it for you. So you felt guilty and you felt like you had to eat it. But man, did it have a lot of salt in it. And how did how did you feel? You know, try and correlate those feelings with what you're eating. Um, and lastly, think about all the different kinds of low sodium foods that you can purchase at the grocery store. I mean, we are very fortunate that a lot of the uh, the lines are, you know, putting out low sodium options. But it's important, just like we talked about earlier, that you know what the terms mean and the claims that they're making. So if something says low sodium, you actually know what that means. Or if it says, you know, sodium free, you know what, the, what it actually means. So maybe being a little more um, aware of yourself uh, when you're doing the grocery shopping this week. Um, it's all really important stuff. All right, and the last part of this, I just want to touch on really quick. I, I know I spoke about this in, uh, last week during the, the last seminar. It's just about physical activity and blood pressure management because it, it is that important that it needs to be discussed in almost every seminar that we're, we're doing in this series. So, um, physical activity, just a friendly, friendly reminder that it is so very, very important to make sure you're remaining physically active, especially in the treatment of blood pressure, uh, high blood pressure. So evidence has shown us time and time again that regular physical activity can lead to a significant reduction in blood pressure and improve other cardiovascular risks. So they say that moderate physical activity is proven to decrease our blood pressure in any sort of hypertensive patients who are at least responsive, who are a little bit less responsive to medical treatment. So moderate physical activity. So if you're walking or, um, you know, your, your heart is, is beating at a pretty steady rate for about 30 minutes a day, 
hopefully with the goal of six to seven days each week, that is definitely going to uh, result in better management or a reduction in your blood pressure. So if you're if you're logging your your physical activity in the Healthy app, um, that's a one great way to track it. Um, if you have a, a smartwatch or a Fitbit or a Apple Watch or a Samsung, whatever it is, that utilize that tool because that's great technology to help us track our heart rate, track our physical activity, make sure we're reaching our our daily uh, times and our daily goals, whether that's steps or minutes. Um, and it doesn't have to be a, tri a trip to the gym always. Um, of course, you know, we encourage that. But if you can remain physically active by just walking a dog or um, going for um, a 15 minute walk in the morning outside on a nice day, 15 minute walk in the evening, um, any sort of physical activity counts. And, and it truly does. And it, and it is an important, important component in uh, the treatment and management of, of high blood pressure. So I didn't want to leave that out. Of course, my my job is always to talk about the nutrition part of it, but physical activity, go, they go hand in hand. So I just wanted to remind you guys. All right, you guys have questions or um, feel free to put them in the chat if you don't want to say them out loud. Um, any feedback, any questions you guys have, if you forget them now and you want to um, reach out or rewatch the video, this will be posted on YouTube. Um, you can always either message us in the Healthy app. We'll always answer you guys. I had a question, uh, Francis. I have a <clears throat> uh, one person, but I've seen a couple, even family members. Mm -hmm. And specifically, they have high blood pressure. Uh, but even our blood pressure might be down, but they might have swelling of their feet and ankles, mm. you know. So what are the causes? I mean, I know it has something to do with their blood pressure, but is there mm. anything they can do or prevention, the swelling of the feet and ankles, which seem to be, again, common with people with high blood pressure? Mm -hmm. So you said they, they don't have high blood pressure, but they're still experiencing the swelling, correct? Yeah, yeah. Well, they did, but, you know, wow. they're on... In a pro one person in a program, her blood pressure is going down, and so they're mm -hmm. able to manage their blood pressure, but mm -hmm. they're still having a swelling in the ankle and the feet. Yeah. Uh, sometimes you do see that. I, th I think the the main piece of advice or tip that I can give is just make sure you are drinking uh, adequate water throughout the day because a lot of the times, yes, it is water that you're retaining, um, but you know if your blood pressure is still high and you're managing it through your diet, then as long as you're remaining physically active, you're drinking your water, staying hydrated, and getting the um, adequate rest at night, whether that means, you know, if your feet are constantly swelling, elevating them at night, um, as long as you're focusing on those three main things, I think that will help. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else have questions? Feel free to put them in the chat if you don't want to say them out loud. Uh, I, I do just want to remind you guys, we will have a, a third, our third nutrition seminar will be same time, same place next Tuesday. It will be over Zoom. I uh, hope that you guys can join us. Uh, we'll be talking about uh, grocery shopping a little bit more. So I know I touched on it a little bit this week as far as what to look for on um, a lot of the grocery items, but we're going to talk a little bit more in detail about it next week. So I hope that you guys can join us. No one has any questions before we head out for this wonderful, enjoy the rest of the day. Seems like it's a good weather all over most of the U.S. Everybody enjoyed the eclipse yesterday. Did you see the, what was that? The Was it the eclipse? What was that? We had yeah, it's a little eclipse. Yep. It was and we enjoyed it. <laughs> it got it got a little a little dark. Uh, it kind of yeah. And we got one person coming on. Hi Evelyn, we're finishing up. <laughs> so we'll uh have the video. We will have the video loaded. Also, we do have um I sent you guys out uh you can on YouTube watch the full video. If you're in a high blood pressure program, management program, you can uh, access it in your app 
This video will also be uploaded as well as 